Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 15th episode of the Cantina Chatter podcast. Today, I am joined by my good friend and mega Jurassic Park toy collector, Baptiste from Baptiste Coudet Reviews on YouTube and social media. Our topic of discussion is toy hunting in Japan. A few months ago, I had the great privilege of spending two weeks in Japan. Followers of my YouTube channel and social media are aware of this as I produced a documentary about what toy stores are like throughout Japan. As it turns out, Baptiste also got to spend some time in Japan as well. Being the toy collector that he is, I thought it would be fun for us to share our experiences and provide some insight to listeners of the podcast. Baptiste, thank you so much for joining me today on Cantina Chatter. Exactly. I'm really thrilled to do this with you because uh, Japan is really an incredible experience. For our listeners who don't know, uh, you're in Paris, so uh, our time difference is just crazy difference. It was very hard to coordinate this. We've been trying to do it for a while now. Exactly. So I've been a huge fan of Jurassic Park since I was three years old, and I've been studying paleontology, got my master's degree, but I was so fan of collecting toys, I decided to switch to marketing. And right now I'm working at Mattel, so as you can imagine, life is good. (laughs) That's awesome. So I want to talk about toy hunting, but before I do that, tell me a little bit about your Japanese experience. What were some of the fun things you did? How did you like it? And would you go back? Well, so I went there in February 16 with my class, but actually I took an extra week to just visit everything I wanted. So... I've been doing like the Nakano Broadway Center, also the Godzilla Hotel, Pokemon Center. Uh, It was really amazing. So all these places were mostly in Tokyo, even if I moved a bit to other places. But honestly, uh, it was something really incredible to see all the passion for Japanese to details and figures in so many things. I think the one, the thing that really surprised me is that in Japan you can not find really uh, toys made by other countries. So this was really something a bit disappointing. But the cool thing is that they've got such an expertise in doing figures on licenses like Star Wars, Alien. So it was for me really amazing. Um, there's that language barrier, of course, but they're so willing to help in so many incredible ways. Uh, that globally you always find yourself at the right place at the right time and honestly if I had to go back today I would clearly take my bags right away and leave (laughs) and by bags I mean empty bags to just fill them with figures because (laughs) the prices are also great (laughs) yeah that's awesome I mean I absolutely agree with you I, I loved Japan I mean we did we spent two weeks there and we did so many things a few of the highlights. We went to the New York bar at the Park Hyatt in Tokyo. That's where they filmed uh, Lost in Translation uh, at that hotel and in that bar with uh, Bill Murray, Scarlett Johansson. So it was really cool to see that. Um, we went to Tokyo Tower. It's the tallest uh, freestanding tower in the world. And uh, when you go to the very top of it, you can walk on glass. And I was very nervous to do that, but I did it. Um, we went to Tokyo Disney Sea, Tokyo Disneyland. Uh, absolutely amazing, especially Disney Sea was just an absolutely incredible park. Uh, we did Universal Studios Japan in Osaka. Uh, we went to Hiroshima and we did the tour of the Peace Park and the Atomic Bomb Dome. Uh, we took the ferry to Mayajima Island um, and uh, Kyoto, which perhaps was possibly my favorite thing we went to. I mean, it, it was just an amazing city. Uh, We got electric bicycles and uh, we drove around uh, visiting shrines and temples. Uh, Such an ancient city. And of course, uh, when it comes to Japan, you really can't forget about the awesome food that they have there. Oh, yes. Uh, It was also something quite surprising because when you go to Japan, you're kind of afraid because nothing is written in English. (laughs) So you have to guess from the photos. And each time I was like, well, let's try this out. And every time it was cheap. And good so this was really great and actually one thing that is surprising is I think Japan is one of the only country where going to restaurant every day is cheaper than doing your groceries oh absolutely the prices were amazing on food uh, everything was definitely very uh, affordable and uh, y- you know just awesome prices everywhere we went and uh, like you said there is a language barrier so 
when you're looking at food. Luckily, a lot of the places have the uh, the pictures, or not the pictures, but they have the actual food like on a display when you walk into the restaurant. So if you see something that looks good, you're like, hmm, maybe I want to try that. So that was really, really cool. Exactly. And I think one thing that was quite frustrating, and people have to know about that, finding chocolate larger than half a Kit Kat bar <laughs> is quite hard. <laughs> yeah, that is a good point. Now that you mention it, um, I had a really hard time finding those green tea Kit Kats that are very popular, but we try like green tea ice cream. In Japan, it's all about the tea, like all kinds of different teas. And uh, you can get your green tea with uh, the matcha, the little green powder. And I actually brought some of that back with me. I still have some. Um, it's awesome, awesome stuff. Um, so I put a list together of uh, the toy stores that I went to while I was there. I know that you went to some of the same ones because you actually gave me advice on where to go. So the first place I went to was Nakano Broadway, and that was on our first full day in Tokyo. So what did you think about Nakano Broadway? Well, honestly, I think that if you have one store to do in Japan, uh, it's clearly this one. It's like three levels of small retailers who have like 12 displays full of figures. And by full, like it's very different from what we know in our countries. It's like all the items together. It's a bit messy. But at the same time, so amazing because from the floor to the ceiling, you've got tons of toys. And uh, it was really great for me because there's like a specific Transformer store. And also most of the retailers, they do carry some amazing alien like Kotobukiya and, uh, and stuff like that. So really, it was great. Uh, really an amazing place. And I think you can really spend like half a day in that, uh, in that toy store. Oh, totally. I mean, we spent at least a good three hours there. And I don't even know that I saw everything. But yeah, it's incredible the, the number of toy stores that you can find in Econo Broadway. And they're all small stores, but it's that there's so many of them in this mall. It's absolutely crazy. And like you said, um, just from the floor all the way to the ceiling, all kinds of toys. And uh, most of them, I'm sure you noticed this too, were like imp were, uh, the Japanese companies like uh, Bandai, SH Figure Arts, uh, Medicom, uh, Kotobukiya, you know, all those different brands. Not a whole lot of, and you mentioned this earlier, like Hasbro, Mattel. Some of these specialty stores in Econo Broadway did have them, but they were clearly like secondhand, like they had purchased them in the past and they were reselling them. Um, but yeah, I mean, that place was absolutely incredible. And if uh, anybody, you know, like, like you said, if somebody goes to Japan and wants to go to one place and, you know, hit as many toy stores as possible, I mean, Nakano Broadway is definitely that place. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's like a marathon when you get there. And actually, um, when I was in Japan, I went two times there because the first one I was with uh, friends of mine and they were like, okay, so we're staying one hour and a half. And I was like, oh my God, I have to spend all my money in one hour and a half. Let's do this. So I was running everywhere. It was like really a frenzy. And uh, I went back one week later and spent like two hours there. So yeah, it's really an amazing place and one of the great memories of that country. Absolutely. So the next place that uh, we went to when we were there was um, Ami Ami. It's in uh, Akihabara. It's a ward in, in Tokyo. Uh, and it's very famous for its electronic shops and its anime culture. Uh, there's a lot of uh, manga shops there. And uh, Amiyami is a big uh, online retailer. I actually import a bunch of the figures that I buy from uh, Figuarts and Medicom uh, through their store. Um, so it was actually really cool for me to go there to see what it was actually like visiting their store. And uh, I even saw some employees packaging uh, toys that they were going to ship out and <laughs> I imagined to myself oh that's probably what it looks like when they send me toys <laughs> so um, that was a really cool place to go to as well um, you know being the online store you know they just had a huge selection of stuff so I think that was definitely uh, a cool one and as you're pointing out uh, the thing that was surprising is that in most of the stores there's a whole area dedicated to packaging because in Japan, as far as I know, the packaging is as important as the, the product itself. Mm -hmm. So this was really uh, also surprising. Oh, absolutely. And um, one place that I noticed that especially was um, at the Kotobukiya store, which is also in Akihabara. And, and that's a massive four or five story store. And, uh, you know, a lot of stores in Japan, they're multiple stories tall because space is limited. And um, 
Kotobukiya store, lots of Star Wars, including other brands. It wasn't just Kotobukiya. They had Medicom, they had Bandai, and uh, so many other different companies. Did you get a chance to go to any of the Kotobukiya stores? No, again, it's the kind of stuff I saw and I was like, oh my god, I don't have the time, but <laughs> I wish I could have been Next there. Next time, right? <laughs> exactly. So I know that you went to this one, a uh, big camera locations everywhere like some were really big like department stores multiple levels clothing sections cosmetics uh camping gear musical instruments and toy sections and then some bit camera stores were smaller and they didn't have the toy sections so how many bit camera locations uh do you think you visited i actually think i've made only one but it was really a massive store and if i remember well the toys were on the last level uh, between DVDs and video games. And actually, uh, again, it was really incredible. But I was really stunned to see that you can only find Japanese toys. And, for example, I was also looking a lot for Godzilla. And it's mostly vinyl figures, uh, like with the small tags on them. Uh, the die casts are also great. You've got uh, Tommy Takara and stuff like that, mm -hmm. which is really awesome. And uh, Pokemon, of course, like you've got full shelves of them. So it was great, um, but it's more like Howard Toy Stores. I think they were carrying only new items and you didn't have all the previous lines like you can find, for example, in Nakano. Right. Um, yeah, the one really big, big camera that I went to, because we did go to a bunch of them, but there was one in Shinjuku there in Tokyo. And that was like the really, really big one that we saw, like the biggest one. And uh, it sounds kind of similar to what you're saying, because the toy section was like way at the top, like on the very last like floor. And um, it, it was just really, really big. They had all kinds of stuff there, Lego um, and a bunch of Geshapon machines and all sorts of uh, different things. Uh, awesome place. And they, they also had the Takara Tomi uh, dinosaurs. Uh, I think I showed those to you that I picked up. Those were really cool. Yeah. So uh, did you get a chance to go to any Toys R Us locations? I didn't, but uh, I've been to a store, uh, maybe you went there, called Monster Japan. don't know if that's... I didn't uh, get a chance to go to that one, no, but I did have it on my list. So, it's a bit the same. Uh, it's a toy store, and I think it's the only one in Japan specialized in import. Uh, so, you can also find uh, American brands, uh, French brands, which is uh, quite great. And there I could find many toys from many movies. Because, once again, in Japan, if the movie uh, is not famous there, you won't find a lot of <laughs> stuff. But, for example, I know it's not the greatest find of all time, but uh, they were carrying the hybrid electronic T-Rex from Jurassic World. And I think it was released, like, for only a few days in the U.S. and they already had it, so I had to take it. Um, but, yeah, it was a bit similar to Toys R Us. But... Uh, Smaller, of course, but with tons of toys uh, from several companies. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, I mean, I really wanted to go to that store. I think the day that we wanted to go there, it was closed for some reason. I think it was just the day of the week that, I think it was on Tuesdays it was closed, so we weren't able to visit it. But, uh, you know, it's definitely on my list for next time because it sounds like a really cool store. And it looked like a really cool store from what I saw online. I was looking at photos of it. Um, but I did get to go to One Toys R Us, and that was in Kyoto. And, um, uh, you know, my husband was amazing. He was very patient with me because he doesn't collect toys. He's not into toys. We were on electric bikes and I got him to ride down with me to Toys R Us, which was at a big mall there. And, um, you know, surprisingly, it was so much like uh, the Toys R Us here in the U.S. Like it, they had pretty much the same selection as far as, um, you know, all the action figures and girls toys and all that go. The difference was that they also had uh, the import figures there. They had uh, the the Bandai. They had uh, the Medicom stuff. So I thought that was especially cool. And um, they even had some exclusives that Toys R Us carries in the U.S. that were really hard to find. So, you know, I made sure to take advantage of that and, uh, you know, buy a few things while I was there. But that was a really cool thing because, you know, when you're in a foreign country like that, you know, seeing things that are a little bit, familiar to you like Toys R Us is always a little bit comforting to see so I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, it seems quite interesting because uh, I'm not sure there's such a passion and uh, 
frenzy again for the exclusive in Japan because they consider the toys a bit differently than us, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think this place really won't... Like, you give me the need to get there the next time because I think it must be quite interesting. Yes, absolutely. And uh, like you were saying earlier, when it comes to Japanese toys, it, it's, or you know, anything in Japan, really, it's about the quality uh, more than the quantity. Like everything in Japan is just high quality, no matter what it is. And it's the same thing with toys. Like most of these stores, like you were saying, you're not going to find Mattel. You're not going to find Hasbro or, you know, the, you know, the, the mass produced toys that we collect here in the U.S. I mean, it's all about, you know, the Medicom. It's all about the, the Bandai, the Figuarts, uh, the Kotobukiya, the Yamaguchi, things like that. I mean, it, it's all the higher end stuff. And um, which is pretty cool. I mean, it, it's a little more expensive, but when you actually get one of these products, I mean, the quality is definitely obvious. Exactly, you can you can really feel the difference. Like, for example, the basic toy are the Gashapon one that can uh, buy in small plastic balls. And actually, when you assemble the figures, you're like, oh my god, that's it. it was like hand painted, of course, and it's really amazing. Of uh, and each size of toy, you can really feel all the details. Like, for example, the Kotobukiya Big Chap Alien is the same size of NECA figure. And from eating hand, you're like, okay, there's absolutely a universe of difference between the two. And clearly the Japanese, they don't put something on the market if they're not 100% sure it's perfection. Totally. Uh, yeah, the Geshapon machines are a great example. And they're kind of like uh, here in the U.S., um, if you're exiting like a Toys R Us, if you're at the mall, a lot of the times you'll find, um, you know, those coin machines. You put a quarter in, 50 cents in, you get a really cheap plastic toy or something. Um, that's kind of what these are like, but they're a little more expensive than that. I mean, they were probably like between one and four dollars or so. And uh, the quality of the of the toys, though, is amazing. I mean, like you're saying. Uh, everything is done to perfection. A lot of the stuff looks hand painted, and uh, these machines are absolutely everywhere. They're in subway stations, they're uh, outside of stores, or in malls. Um, I mean, they're just all over the place, which is pretty awesome. And I found myself, you know, really like enjoying those. I, I spent a lot of money on the Geshapon machines, <laughs> and uh, I was able to complete a little set of the uh, the Bandai um, Dragon Ball. Uh, Z figures like I was able to put together a little set of those but yeah I noticed that most of those toys a lot of them seem to be made by Bandai which is pretty awesome yeah on my side it was the same uh, I've got a huge collection of Gashapon figures from Godzilla movies because I really like the Japanese Godzilla movies especially the one from the 90s and uh, for me it was like a gold mine like I was buying them uh, every 10 minutes and all the figures were so awesome. I mean, it's a pleasure because you can buy tons of them and they don't take a lot of place in your suitcase. So, perfect. Right. Unless you're, you're carrying the little egg um, capsules that they come in. <laughs> if you're, I brought all of those back with me and they took up a lot of space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that, was, that was just pretty, pretty fun. Definitely fun to collect those. And uh, I was really... Uh, pleasantly surprised because uh, there is a Japanese manga store here and I went into it and they had some of those machines and I was like oh my god that's so awesome <laughs> so but you know of course they take yen and um, so the owner of the store he says well if you give me a dollar you know I'll give you a hundred yen and then you can use the machine so <laughs> that was pretty fun <laughs> so I think that we've done a pretty good job summing up what toy hunting is like in Japan um, are there any final thoughts you have or advice you might want to give to our listeners if they are considering toy hunting in Japan? Well, you've been talking about Universal Studios, and I've been there too. And actually, people have to know that there are tons of exclusive items there. Like, for example, on Harry Potter, you've got all the diecast of the main vehicles that are exclusive. You've got also the famous nanoblocks, this kind of uh, mini Legos. And you've got the Jurassic Park Raptor, Pteranodon, the Jurassic Park Gate. So there are really tons of stuff to get there. So I think it's a, a must-do. But just a warning on this. In Japan, it's, it's perceived as a social activity to queue. And all the attractions are made to optimize the queue. And by optimize, I mean make it the longer possible. So get ready to wait like one hour for every attraction. But if you just plan to do 
three or four during the day, but buy toys. Uh, it's really a great place to go to. Yeah, that's some really good advice. Um, and uh, when we went to Universal, I think we bought a uh, some sort of a pass where uh, it was like a VIP pass or something where you could you didn't have to wait as long on several rides. And that was definitely worth it because we got to do a lot more. And um, one thing I would advise also anybody that's going to consider going to Universal is that uh, you can't be over a certain size in order to ride the rides. <laughs> like there was one roller coaster that we wanted to do and my husband was a little bit too tall. So he was unfortunately unable to do the ride. And I wasn't too tall because I'm short, but, you know, I didn't want to go without him. So <laughs> that was a little disappointing. <laughs> exactly. The nano blocks, though, uh, are definitely something that you see all over the place. And you don't see those in the U.S., uh, I actually did see the ones you were referring to, the Jurassic Park gate and the Raptor, and there was a different one. I thought about getting them while I was there in the gift shop outside of the Jurassic Park, the ride, but they were kind of expensive from what I recall. I think like the gate, I want to say it was maybe like close to about $80 US, and I just felt like that was a little bit expensive. Yeah, yeah, they're quite expensive, but the Raptor and Pteranodons are quite affordable, so yes, it's... uh. It's not the same prices as uh, we could expect. Absolutely. And uh, even the hotel we stayed at there at Universal, they had a, a dinosaur-themed store, which I thought was pretty awesome. They had all these different uh, <laughs> dinosaur figurines, and uh, there's a favorite dinosaur company. And uh, I picked up a couple of their models, and they do some higher-end like statues as well. But yeah, pretty cool to see stuff like that, because you just don't have things like that in the U.S. and in other places. Exactly. Uh, it's like the Godzilla Hotel in Tokyo. So actually, uh, I don't think they had any store because I went there and I didn't see any. But it's really amazing. Like you're in the street and on top of that huge tower, you've got a life-size Godzilla head and hand coming out uh -huh. of the building. <laughs> and as you say, they really have hotels that are way more badass than ours. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I actually did see that. That was in Shinjuku where they had the the. Godzilla, like the big old head coming out in the hand. I saw that at nighttime. <laughs> it was pretty neat. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely an affordable place to go to. And that's one thing a lot of people say is, oh, you know, it's probably so expensive for you to go there. It really wasn't. I mean, even our flights on Japan Airlines were, were, were quite affordable considering how far we were going. And uh, it was a very good experience as far as, you know, being on a plane. And, um, you know, just the hotels and restaurants. I mean, it, it wasn't that expensive. I actually think that... We spend more just going to Hawaii, and that's, you know, here in the United States. So uh, I think it was definitely worthwhile, I mean, as far as, uh, you know, budgeting and money is concerned. Exactly. And I think that's something which is really great, that the people there, again, are really helpful. They are always willing to make you feel comfortable. Uh, if they don't, I mean, most of the time they can't really talk with you, but they will always find a way with smartphones or stuff like that to make you understand something. So it was really amazing. And uh, you were talking about the places I would recommend. There's also that small store uh, just under a freeway called Gojira Ya. And actually in that store, uh, it's very, very small, like a few square meters. But it's full of Godzilla toys from all the precedent years, like from the... 50s, 60s, it's really amazing. And I can remember there, uh, the girl in charge of the store was like super willing to help me despite of the language barrier. And she spent like a few minutes explaining me stuff that I didn't get for most of it. But in the end, uh, when I showed them my bag full of Gashapon figures from Godzilla, then we start like laughing and stuff like that. it was really great and amazing because you don't have that kind of experience i think in most of the stores so yeah i think it's a place that people have to go to also yeah that's a really good point and we noticed that right away um the people in japan are just so polite so friendly so respectful and everywhere that we went that's that was our experience everything in japan is very clean um, you know, just anywhere. I mean, you don't see graffiti on the walls. You don't see like trash in the streets. Uh, I mean, it was just an amazing experience. Like I, I love the Japanese culture. I mean, I absolutely, I didn't really know what to expect going to Japan because I hadn't been anywhere quite that foreign before. But um, I, I mean, I absolutely fell in love with it. It was just such an amazing place. And, uh, you know, definitely one day, 
uh, I want to go back. And I think it would be easier because, uh, you know, doing the subway and doing the trains and, um, you know, the bullet trains and all that, it, it can be kind of confusing, especially when you're trying to catch a train real quick and you're running up the stairs and down the stairs <laughs> <laughs> carrying suitcases. Exactly. Yeah, so. It's, it's, it's a bit tricky the first days because you've got like public transportation, you've got private transportation, but it's the same kind of train. So sometimes your pass is working, sometimes it isn't. <laughs> and uh, I can remember a, a, cool, a cool story about that. We had to be uh, meeting uh, at the Coca-Cola company and we took a train and suddenly the train got super fast and the buildings just started disappearing and it was like the countryside. <laughs> so we were like, oh my God, it was not the right train. We're leaving Tokyo and we were like freaking out. And when the train stopped, hopefully just in front of us was uh, the opposite train with gates open. So we ran into it, the, the gate closed, and suddenly the train started leaving in the same direction we were already <laughs> leaving Tokyo from. And all the Japanese around us, like, you know, they don't really show their expressions, but they looked at us with, like, small smiles, like, mm-hmm, you failed. And we were so, it was so fun. But, yeah, the train can be quite confusing, but hopefully we can always find help. So this was great. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, we, we were definitely confused too, with this, especially like the first night that we got to Tokyo. Um, it was, you know, we, we went down to the train station. And it was like, oh my God, it was like a huge culture shock to us. Like, it was just crazy because we don't have anything like that in the US. Um, there's, we, I mean, trains, I mean, we all drive cars here, you know, I mean, if you take public transportation, there's nothing like that. So, I mean, especially like the bullet trains that go, you know, 180 miles per hour. I mean, that was just an absolutely insane experience for us. Yeah, well, I'm in Paris, so I'm quite used to public transportation. But yeah, as you said, uh, it's so clean and, well, it's a bit messy to find your right train at the beginning. But I mean, in France, half of the time you don't have even any sign. So you're obviously getting lost at like in 10 minutes. <laughs> But yeah, about the fact that it was really clean, when I went back to Paris, I really felt, oh my God, we're living in a disgusting city. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was really shocking because you, it really changed your point of view when you, once you get there. Oh, absolutely. I felt the same way. As soon as we came back, I'm like, oh man, back to normal life. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's just such a contrast how clean it is and how perfect everything is over there. Like... It's amazing. No potholes in the streets. I mean, everything is just immaculate. And, um, you know, just the politeness and the respect. And when we got back here, I mean, some of the first things we saw were like people being disrespectful <laughs> and stuff. I mean, sad to say, but, it, you know, it, it's true that that was the case. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, Japan, amazing place. Love it. I definitely want to go back, hopefully within the next few years. Same for me. Exactly the same. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Baptiste, for joining me today. It has been an absolute pleasure speaking with you on the podcast. Well, thank you, really. It was awesome to finally make this video with the schedule. So <laughs> I'm glad we did it. Well, all right, my friends, that'll do it for this 15th episode of the Cantina Chatter podcast. Once again, I would like to thank Baptiste for coming on here today and reminiscing about our amazing trips to Japan. Be sure to check out his YouTube page and follow him on social media. If you're listening on iTunes, please be sure to leave a five-star rating to help improve our standing. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. As always, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the Cantina Chatter podcast on Victoria's Cantina. Until next time, bye-bye.